Hey friends, thanks for joining us. Happy first day of summer. Uh, we are so excited to have a big group of folks from all over the country here at Moss Mountain Farm today. We'll be having lunch. It's a lunch and learn day. Uh, we've got one more week ahead of us, so uh, if you can join us next Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, uh, that'll be the end of our season uh, until fall. And if you can't come this summer, make sure you come see us this fall. Well, we had a few technical difficulties because a storm blew through and we weren't able to post our usual uh, um, feature for you on, on Friday. So today, I decided to do something a little more impromptu and it is first day of summer, so we thought we'd do something a little special and take you around and just show you some of the things that are blooming here. Hopefully that'll help you in your own garden. Uh, and I always love showing all the flowers and it's so great to have people here uh, going through the gardens and um, so why don't we just take a look at some of the uh, some of these um, friends that are showing up with with questions I just it's so important to me to know where you're coming from there's uh, Gina from, from uh, gosh look at all these friends showing up thank you all so much that's the art studio you're seeing there and uh, I like to draw and paint and someday we'll talk about that on some of our shows because art is such an important part of, of what I do. Um, but let's start first by just coming around here on the north side of the house. And I just want to show you where I keep a collection of hydrangeas uh, in containers. Uh, hydrangeas are one of my favorite plants. If you love hydrangeas, I'd love to hear from you. Um, I've got multiple varieties here and I kind of stage them in a way to to show you today. Uh, they've been blooming for some time, and uh, this is one of my favorites. This is uh, one called Annabelle. And when Annabelle first opens, they'll have this beautiful creamy white flower, and then they'll soon begin to, to fade uh, a little bit to more of this chartreuse uh, green, which I, I like equally well. And then as they really, really fade, or senesce, as we like to say, in the horticulture. So, um, as I was saying, sorry for a little technical difficulty there. Uh, this is one of the mop head varieties. You can see it's about to finish up um, here. Um, we're getting a little bit of uh, aging on the side. You who've been here to the farm know that this lawn is, is really a screen for a 6,000 gallon cistern that is underground. And we designed this when we designed the farm. Uh, this, this cistern uh, allows us fresh water that we can harvest right off the buildings. Uh, we harvest off of the main house, the art studio, and the summer kitchen, as well as the barns. But the water comes into here, and then we can use that water to water the terrace gardens. Not much more than that, but the terrace gardens we can use that water and it's a great way to be responsible with a very important resource water i get a lot of questions about this particular plant and uh, many of you who garden are going to see this and go oh well that's easy that's boxwood one called green velvet and we have used it for many years from the beginning these plants are probably about 10 years old now and we've never really clipped them i like this sort of cloud like uh, planting that you can see here. Now there's a problem going on in the country called boxwood decline syndrome. And we've planted old Buxus sempervirens, we've planted Buxus sapruticosa, the dwarf uh, English boxwood, and we've just had trouble with this syndrome uh, where entire hemispheres of the boxwood would die. And so what we've done is we've slowly been replacing this. What's special about it and what gives it, I think, that sort of genetic resistance is this plant is actually a cross between the uh, Korean boxwood or the microphylla types, the Asian types, and the European type boxwood. And you get a hybrid vigor there that's made them very, very strong. So i just like to point out a few things here uh, in the way of containers uh, that we're, we're growing. Uh, I love mixed containers here. Uh, this is kind of fun. Uh, it's just kind of a wacky mix. Uh, before we had some pansies and you can see just the, the remnants of a few pansies blooming here. Uh, those were replaced by uh, some lantana um, and some petunias. 
And this wonderful, wonderful native plant called Gara, which is just fantastic. There's Bonnie Lawrence, hi there from New Jersey. Good to see all you folks this morning. Friends from Australia, my goodness, this is really exciting. And there's Denise, hello from Australia, um, as well as Pennsylvania. Keep the comments coming, we love hearing from you. So even here, you're gonna get a few weeds. We got a little crabgrass action going in here. And um, I like to just pull the weeds. It's a great point of therapy for me. And then in here, we've got a little Seloisia coming along that'll come up here and, and uh, rival this Gara uh, with lots of pink blooms. But I'm, I have fun with this pink and, and purple, I mean, pink and orange combination because I think it's very electric. And then what we have here is the, this crazy, um, wonderfully crazy Gara. So what we have here is a, 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 a thriller um, we have a filler in the way of the lantana, and we have a spiller with the pink petunia. So uh, it's, a, it's a great way to think about containers. So the, um, the thing I want you to notice is we've got this, this arbor, or loggia across here, and I've got some uh, wisteria growing up on them. This isn't just an ordinary wisteria. This is the Native American wisteria. And a lot of folks don't realize that these wisterias, uh, that there is an American variety. This is um, one called uh, Frutessens, um, Amethyst Falls. And you can see this is a little, little bud here coming along. And what I like about it, if you'd been here a month ago, this thing would shower, would shower us with purple blooms. Uh, but what's great about this one is that it will rebloom through the summer. Not as much as it does in the, in the beginning, but this is the effect that we're going for. You can see here how this one has really taken off and makes a beautiful uh, accent to the corner of this pergola along the art studio. Uh, a few of the other things here I want to point out is that, uh, again, another example of having the great mop head hydrangeas blooming. This is a reblooming type. You can see here these are, well, this one is just about finished up. This one's been in bloom for a month or longer, but look, we've got new buds coming along here. So really look into some of those reblooming hydrangeas. It's really, really important. Um, Sun Patience is one of my uh, fallback plants for flower power. And you can see here, we've got just a couple of containers of, of the Sun Patience, which are just amazing. Just the bloom on these. They're huge, and, and I love the, var the variegation you see here. But these sun patients are true to the name. They really need full sun. They need full sun to uh, really put out that kind of flower power and the size of the bloom, which I think is really quite, quite extraordinary. Now, one of the things I want to point out here, and you'll see in just a few minutes, these are lilies that I'm growing in pots. A lot of folks don't have a lot of room, and that shouldn't be any problem at all because so many of these things can be grown in containers. I'm going to pull back so you can see the container. These lilies have been in this container for five years, and um, they have been left outside. They are as tough as they can possibly be. This is a, an oriental type. And as we walk down and look into the other aspects of the garden, you're going to see some of the trumpet type lilies in bloom. So why don't we walk down? We've got a, a, a great group of people here with our tour guide, Ellen. Uh, by the way, this is uh, the American agave. This is uh, agave americana variegata. So you can see the variegation um, here on the, on the leaves, which is really quite beautiful. So we've got some fans right here. Hello, everybody. Hi there. Good to see you all. Yeah. So if you come along here, you'll see that we punctuated along here. Hello, everyone. Hi there. Um, you can see we've got uh, the agave here in these urns. And I love to use this as a punctuation point in this garden. The theme here is really yellows, gray greens. Uh, and and white and then of course purple. If we step into here, you'll see that we've got agapanthus both in blue and white and flower. This is lily of the Nile. 
very uh, wonderful plant. Um, it's one of those plants I've always wanted to grow. I don't really, it's not the zone for them, but hey, you know, let's defy the critics. Find a way to grow them. So I grow them in pots and bring them out every year. Um, right here is one of the, this great tumble uh, that I want you to see of this wonderful silver brocade uh, Artemisia spilling out. These came from our friends at Gilbert H. Wild and Son. Uh, wonderful source for perennials, as did the lily bulbs. Look at these li lilies. Are they not magnificent? And this group of lilies has been here for four years. And uh, the folks at Gilbert H. Wild put me onto these and they have been absolutely splendid. Uh, so if you haven't checked out the Gilbert H. Wild and Son website, you really should go. Sign up for their newsletter. Sign up for their regular postings. They've always got great stuff going on there. I've been working with them the last year to curate and find really interesting plants for gardens and sharing a lot of the garden plants that we have here in Moss Mountain Farm. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of pollinators at work, and that's a very important, very, very important um, uh, uh, aspect of what we're working, what zone we're in. Uh, we're in, uh, the farm is about 600 acres. Um, and One of them, this is also called the chase tree. The chase tree is, uh, is of European or Eurasian descent uh, or origin. And uh, this particular variety is called Shoals Creek, and if you can just look at those bloom trusses, I mean, that's almost two feet of bloom on these. So when you're looking for Vitex, you really need to look for the correct cultivar. So let's go on and walk down here a little bit, and you can kind of see the these, uh, containers. About containers of all kinds. Uh, if you look behind us, you'll see some of our visitors uh, coming around. Hello, everyone. Hi there. Say hello to all our YouTube fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Say hello to YouTube fans. Okay. <laughs> and then, um, of course, the Agapanthus. What you find with the Agapanthus is that these things will actually bloom in containers where the roots are bound. Um, uh, so if you're one of these that don't like to replant from year to year, you can leave your agapanthus in pots for a long, long time. The more uh, root bound, the better they seem to flower. They're considered a heavy feeder. And so when we bring them uh, out, I used to keep them in the garage. And if you do that, if you keep them in the garage, the idea in the winter is just to cut off any water, cut off any feeding. Let them just go dormant. You just want to keep them around 40 degrees. Um, you could even drop down to 35, just above freezing. Uh, they'll die down, but they have a really fleshy root, and they hold a lot of moisture in that root. If you tend to call these the storms we've had recently, have really. But um, back to the sun patients, you can see. Look at these gorgeous big old blooms on them, and just look at that. Look at all that bud set coming along here. And the key with it, sun and patience is you don't really want to overfeed them. Uh, it's more important that one keep the soil consistently moist. They don't like to sit in water, but they do require a good bit of water. And they can take full hot sun. Up in the front of the house, we're going to give you a tour of that at some point. But I want those sun patients to fill in first so you can see the full effect. And we rarely fertilize them, but we make sure that they get plenty of water. That's the key. So in these containers, it's good to have a saucer under them that helps maintain that consistent water. That's very, very important. Um, stepping back from the house, you can see, looking up here, there's the upper porch of the house. Um, this is on central axis of the garden. The garden was really designed uh, along this axis. We have visitors uh, up on the sleeping porch, you can see up there, visitors on the lower porch. It's very much a garden home, the home that was designed to blur the lines between inside and out. Nature is so important, I think, to all of us. 
Um, so anyway, it's great to, to see the, I know a lot of people are, are having trouble with uh, their, their connectivity uh, today because of all the storms that have blown through, but uh, thank you for bearing with us. All right, so um, this is just uh, one component of the, of, the, of the garden. I think the, the big, um, what I like to call is surprise and delight, showing the mystery of the garden uh, is revealed when you come through the house and you look this way uh, or you come around the hedges and then you get this vista of the Arkansas River. And this is our heritage apple orchard. Uh, we're very particular about our carbon footprint. And so you can see we have mowed areas where you can walk and then we let the rest of it go back into pasture or uncut uh, hay fields. And the seed uh, are a great source of food for the songbirds. Um, and we have a uh, clear view through here to see the river and it has gone down mightily. Uh, many of you follow us and, and saw what we were showing uh, just uh, recently, well, as, as, as few days as 10 days ago. A question just came up about what are the purple trees. These are Vitex, one more time so everybody knows. These are um, also called a chase tree. Your grandmother and great-grandmother have known them as a chase tree, uh, but they've been mightily improved. I, ha I look for plants all over the world and I have never found a better cultivar uh, of, of, that will produce these, this kind of bloom set than one called Shoals Creek. And uh, you can order these through Gilbert H. Wild. Um, I think they may be sold out for now, but get your order in because of these uh, flowers and come visit us in Arkansas. It's a beautiful state, great place to spend your summer. And make sure you put on your bucket list to get yourself here at Moss Mountain Farm. We want to have a good time with you. We want to meet you. We want to have sit down and have, have lunch and have a good chat. All right. Very good.